Tuck. Tuck, you okay? You afraid of the storm? Just a storm. Yeah, it's actually a tornado, but he doesn't need to know that. The week's off to a great start. I'm sure nothing's going to happen. Wow, look at the quality of the video in this room. It is so dark in here. Chances are everything's going to be fine. Cats are in the basement. Dogs will fall me down. Birds and everybody are locked and loaded. And just, I just want to go outside and play in the garden. I guess I probably should have muted the TV. You probably can't hear anything I'm saying, can you? Sorry. I mean, chances are pretty sure nothing's happening out there. Anything? Just rain. Don't see anything. Although they did say it was a rain-wrapped tornado, so... Well, the basement's only like five feet away. It'll be fine. So, people are always recommending those Thunder shirts. Goodness, got some grease on my lens. I don't have a Thunder shirt, but... Got an ugly Christmas sweater. And he seems a little bit more calm. Probably because he's super annoyed. Are you annoyed? I'd be annoyed. You feel better? Yes, no, maybe. This wind better not blow over my palm tree. It's got a flower on it, I'm gonna be mad. Oh, the tornado warning has been lifted. I wouldn't just be like, doing this, at least not on camera. Oh, uh, no, it's just rain and they said like 60 mile per hour winds. Good times. We'd never know that it's September basically at this point. You okay? You all right, Tuck? You okay, Tuck? Yeah, you good boy. I suppose 60 mile per hour wind's still pretty dangerous, right? Whoa! Oh, that looks way worse in person. That's nothing on camera. Sideways rain. I'm just bored. Can you tell I'm bored? Tucker, I'm bored. Make it stop raining. Let's go outside and play. This is the worst start to a vlog ever. I'm so sorry. I suppose I could have just started another time. But storms are exciting. Not so much on camera though, but whatever. And it looks like some water must have come over the wall. It's hard to see from here, but the water's kind of got a green hue to it, which means it's full of mulch. Also though, even though it's blurry, look at what a pretty view this is with the croton and the ginger and everything. That's so nice, even though it's like all reflective and dirty. Not dirty. My windows are clean. I love cleaning windows. 20 minute update, sweater, that was a success. He has calmed down so much. He was, I mean, he's still panting a lot. He was panting like crazy and he started to get like nervous gas. Oh, it was disgusting. You better now, Tuck? I think, I don't know if this is calming him down or if he's just annoyed by it. I, Cause he's a dog, why would he have clothes on? It's cute though, even though it's September. You all right, Tuck? You're okay, I'm so sorry. The storm is almost over, you're gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay, Tuck. You happy to be out of the basement, Pumpkin? You happy to be upstairs, but You can squeaky clean. Oh, you good girl. Pumpkin, you roll over? Pumpkin, roll over, bite. Roll over. Oh, you're too busy getting clean? You don't wanna roll over? You don't wanna roll over, Pumpkin? Oh, <laughs> what's wrong? You gonna get me? Oh, Punkin, you're being recorded right now. You don't need to clean your pants. Clean those Punkin, Punkin. Don't clean your Punkin while you're on camera, Punkin. Punkin, you having a bath with Tucker? Hang out with Tucker? Oh, you roll over, Punkin. Punkin, roll over. Oh, yeah, you're so cute, Punkin. So, I wasn't planning on vlogging. Here, I'm at Home Depot. I was just running in to grab some pool salt because the pool filled up with so much water, everything got diluted. But just look at, look at how beautiful this clematis is. Isn't that gorgeous? It's kind of reddish. At least that's how it looks on my viewfinder. But it is like a vibrant royal purple in person. Absolutely stunning. It, no name, just clematis. It's not very useful. And also a very um, lackluster plant compared to some of the others, right? I mean, look how full, and then there's that one. I really wish this showed how purple it is on camera, because it's it's so pretty. Like, I kind of want it. I'm not going to get it. That would be a really good deal if it were true. Yeah, that ain't a green giant. Nope. That's just a regular arborvitae. 
Well, I mean, that's still a really good deal if you needed it, but the, those are not green giants. Come on, Home Depot. Spit not wise. No, no. Well, this is just dumb. I can't. These are giant bags. I can't reach that. Why would they do that? Is there a ladder or something? Or just a really tall person? Help. Need an extra tall person. I'm almost six foot, so I'm thinking maybe someone around eight or nine feet. That'll do it. Maybe I can, like, balance myself and reach up here. I mean, Home Depot, y'all trying to get sued. This is dumb. Okay, I'm home. Got my salt and everything in the pool so that water can start to clear up. This thing was just so murky and flooded and everything. And it's just, the, it's, the salt gets diluted from all the rain and everything. But here's what I'm dealing with. If you watched last week's vlog, then you know what's going on here. It's only been a day since that vlog. I had to let things kind of dry out a little bit before I could get to doing much out here. But this hydrangea tree, uh, <laughs> it's suffering from overwatering. Not my fault. I didn't, well, okay, it is my fault. But it wasn't my watering. It's just the excessive rain that we've had causes wilting and damage to the plant, basically. The pot became saturated. Ugh. It's weeds, the weeds, the weeds, they never stop. The pot became saturated. It was just raining and raining and raining, and uh, the soil maybe has compacted over time. Maybe there's something underneath there making it so it's not draining properly. I don't know. There are a lot of variables, lots of possibilities to what could have caused this to happen, but the main thing is just that it's been raining a ton. But yeah, this. <laughs> this should not look like this. It should look like this. Very big difference. That honeysuckle. I'm gonna be doing a whole thing with that honeysuckle this fall or spring. We'll talk about that in a different video. For right now, need to handle this. Really, dude? It's not even that hot. Does that feel good, Tuck? Tucker, you hear me? Hey, Tuck. You good boy. Before I dig into this, if things are going to be like the video, I mean, is very random and in really, really, really short bursts. It's because there's an air show coming up here in a few days and the Blue Angels are flying around. Unfortunately, not where I can see them, but making a lot of noise. So if I'm cutting it out a lot, that's what's going on. I've got my pruners here. First thing I need to do is give this a very heavy, intense cutback. I've already taken a branch and just out of curiosity before I started filming give it a little bit of a bend there to see if there's any green in there and there is though not really in focus think it was until i touched it though there we go a little bit of green in there so there's still hope for the plant it just it needs to be revived the entire point of cutting the plant back is that basically what happens when a plant becomes overwatered, uh the roots die anaerobic action happens down here in the root ball too much water's in there, not enough oxygen, and those roots rot off and die. So there's not enough rootage, <laughs> there's not, not enough of a root ball left in there to transport nutrients up into the plant. And that's why plants wilt when they're overwatered, because it's root damage, basically. Not basically, it is, it's root damage. And those dead damaged roots, like I said, can't feed the foliage and everything, so that's why, that's what happened here. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a heavy prune. Oh, and I just remembered, really important, clean your pruners. Having sterile pruning tools, really a good idea in general, but this plant's already susceptible to disease and sickness because I mean, its immunity is highly compromised, right? So that's why clean. I went ahead and rubbed these down with an alcohol swab and gave them a little while to sit before I started on this. Oh, and you want those pruners to be nice and sharp too so you get clean cuts. So this is about as much as I was able to do. Can't quite reach some of those pieces up top, but otherwise it's about where I want it. This isn't like a spring cutback. It's not like I'm trying to make sure that I'm cutting this down to the lower third. That's what you want to do with the paniculatas, the hydrangea paniculatas during the springtime when new growth emerges, give them a cut so you get more bushy full growth. I didn't cut them as much as I should have this year, so they were leaning a little bit more. Next year I will be more thorough with my cutback, but now that that's done, I made sure to cut everything, anything that was brown over here. Let me see, come on, behave. New cameras in the mail, I cannot wait for that to get here. See how there's some green in here? 
if I made any cuts and it was brown, I just kept on going until I got to some green. And that's how I knew where to stop. Nice clean cuts though. Wouldn't be a bad idea if you have a sealer to put that over here to keep anything from getting in there. Uh, cinnamon powder can work well too. Just kind of moisten a cotton swab, dip it in some cinnamon and rub that on there. That can help kind of dry the area out and help keep infection from getting in. So if that's yeah, that's a useful tool. The bungee cords were to help stabilize it. I guess I don't need those anymore, do I? So, moving forward, the bark is nice and sturdy. It's not slimy, slippery, the trunk's not squishy, anything like that. I did also do some rummaging down here in the soil to get an idea of what's going on. I and mean, that was the first thing I did, right? When you see that a pot has a lot of water in it and the leaves are wilting, I went ahead and I tilted it so that the water could drain better and get out of there and get this thing to start drying out. But uh, you know, things like this just come with all kinds of problems. So I've been pulling the leaves off the top so that air can get into there. Ultimately though, I think this is probably going to need to be repotted. Although it is starting to dry out already, so maybe not. It's not as wet as I had feared it would be. I don't smell anything. That's a really good thing. Don't want to smell any type of rot or anything like that. The base of the plant right around here, still nice and firm, which is a great thing. So the next step here is going to be to pull this out. Now that I know that everything's nice and firm, I'm not going to be damaging it or anything like that from doing this. I need to lift this out, clean the roots up. Basically, I just need to get all this old soil out and uh, I'll either plop it back in here or put it into even something else that's maybe bigger just till springtime comes around and maybe I'll get some new pots to put out here. And I'm going to do that off camera when the sun comes back around because I am being eaten alive by mosquitoes over here. All this rain and everything, I just, like, I've knocked off probably 20 or 30 of them from my legs in the last minute or so. So that's enough of that. But yeah, some basics with wealthy plants kind of a catch-22, right? If your plants are wilty, it's hard to decide where to put the camera because there's really no pretty angle from what I'm doing here. We'll just look at this one. It's so much prettier. If you notice that the foliage on a plant is wilty but the soil's wet, chances are it's being overwatered. But that's not always the case. Sometimes the plant's been dried and then you watered it. It was wilty, the soil was dry, you water it and it stays wilty because the same thing can happen with those roots if the soil stays dry for too long. You lose some roots and then they can't get those nutrients back up there. Then you also probably will need to do a cutback if that happens as well. I'd say that's probably like the number one question I get on the videos is my leaves are yellowing or it's wilting but I'm watering it. What do I do? It's just, if it, you're probably overwatering it. If you're watering the plant, the leaves are staying wilted, it's probably just too wet. Need to dry that out. Maybe swap it over to a new pot with some new soil. Things happen. It's a, that happened with this windmill palm last winter. That's why it's still in recovery mode. That's got repotted in the spring. It's rooting out and doing a lot better. It's just important. Never want soil to stay soggy. It's not a great thing for most plants. I mean, there's like bog plants, obviously, but majority of plants, no, bad idea. This should be okay though. Like I said, I'll get it repotted into a fresh mix and uh, make sure to get all that old soil out of there as much of it as I can. I will put a little bit of a starter fertilizer in there, not too much because we're approaching the end of the growing season here. So mostly just like want to keep the plant going. I'm not trying to get it to flush out with tons of new growth. I'd like to see some signs of new growth, just some buds, something like that. Hopefully it'll be able to flush those buds out enough to a point where they're mature before the first frost comes around because that can kind of mess things up too, but it'll be okay doesn't look very good, but it'll be okay. That one looks so much better. I think I can throw this tiki torch away, right? I mean, this just looks terrible. This thing's been sitting back there in my garden. It got eaten by vines and disappeared, but I'd say that can go now. Also, and Thanksgiving cactus people, it's almost that time to start moving the schlumbergeres into the dark. Don't forget, you don't move them into the dark and they won't be signaled to bloom. I just moved mine to an area in my garden where they might get a little bit of filtered morning light, but it'll stay dark throughout pretty much the rest of the day. And uh, I mean, it's just, it's early September. So I usually do this around mid September, sometimes even late September. And that works out just fine. But just a reminder, time's approaching. 
I remember last year I didn't like say anything and then when it was time for them to bloom there were a couple I think it was just one comment it was like why didn't you remind us I don't know remind yourself you have a calendar I'm sure on that phone you're commenting with write it down <laughs> it's impossible to remember to talk about everything good boy you are so wet but there's the friendly reminder it's almost time mark it down mid to late September move your Thanksgiving cactuses to the dark where I keep mine in the garden the Thanksgiving cactuses they tend to it almost happens on its own because in the fall you know the angle of the sun shifts and uh, there's not as much sunlight where I keep them so I don't usually have to mess with it too much but I do still try to remember to move them towards a little bit more dark these lantanas are looking so happy and cheery hmm little bit of a problem I was just sitting down to edit and <laughs> everything's gone like I said, new cameras in the mail. But uh, yeah, this vlog's supposed to come out tomorrow, so I'm going to have to figure that out. Also, this is what's been happening, which is terrible. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'll just go over the important part of this whole thing that I lost. Which is, if anybody was wondering why I didn't just lift the whole thing out of here and let that root ball dry out, because I've learned in the past, if you have a heavy root ball and it's sopping wet and potentially weakened, sometimes when you lift the plant out, the plant rips apart from the roots. So since it, the water did drain out, just not quickly, I tilted it, water drained out more quickly once I tilted it. So since I was able to see the water actually going down, I knew that the plant would be able to dry out. Now when I repot these, I can't repot them this year. Maybe I'll just like bump them up into a like a clay pot, just like a cheap terracotta pot. Although big terracotta pots aren't really cheap, but that'll breathe better. So maybe that's what I'll end up doing. As of right now though, it seems okay. Everything's drying out and doing well. I mean, it still needs to be watered and whatnot and all those fun things, but it should bounce back. Okay, I'm trying to think of what was lost that I can catch up on. The other, like I went to do some things at some nurseries and I can't recreate that but I did I put a new pump in on this fountain over here which is nice it's a little bit of a heavier flow I did that so I could drop this other pump in here because the mosquito dunks I bought a fresh pack not working and uh, there are frogs and things in here sometimes so I don't want to go with the route of oils or anything like that so I just went ahead and put the other pump in here turn it down on low to keep the water circulating down beneath uh, down like towards the bottom so it's not disturbing the soil or anything around these lilies too much and that seems to be working well so far actually and the water surprisingly cleared up a little bit too which is surprising but I guess it just got things stirred so it could resettle I don't know that doesn't make any sense either but it's what happened there's also a lot of rain though right so that probably has something to do with it that got more heavily diluted now if there's a pump in there too, I could throw some mosquito fish in there. Or, I mean, just really anything, as long as it's not too heavily stocked. But I don't, now that the mosquitoes aren't going to be a problem, since water's circulating, there's not really much of a reason to do that, is there? Wow, this is so grainy. I cannot wait for my new camera to come in. Did you do something? No, you just following around, you cute tobes. Because the new camera has a built-in F.14 aperture. It's it'll be really good on low light and it'll stabilize this one the way I edit things I don't think you should be seeing the problems I've been having the past couple months but when uh, I start to record and then finish a recording once those are loaded onto my computer it's like there's a flash of light at the beginning and end of every clip not the end of the world but it means I have to edit out the beginning and ending of every single clip and sometimes there's like 300 clips in a vlog it just depends on like how long I talk versus like if it's just like lots of quick little things or a lot of long conversation. That's what usually makes the biggest difference. Normally it's like 45 to 90 clips, but there have been up to 300 is what I probably should have said. There's been more than that before too. So, but anyways, that's just, it's a lot of cutting and it gets kind of boring and monotonous. So with the new camera, I won't have to do that. Well, this video is supposed to come out tomorrow, so I don't know what to do, guys. I'm so sorry. The new pump thing's kind of exciting. You didn't mitch much with that, though. Mitch much? You didn't miss much with that whole thing. I just talked about how I needed to put a different enclosure around it so it wouldn't get clogged up as fast, and the reason I just told you about why I swapped it out. 
and that's also why the plants are all pull forward and everything. I had this pulled forward to repot it in last week's vlog. I put it back and then I had to, we just keep doing just one of these things. Back and forth. Oh, I went to Michael's and I got one of those fountains that was on coins a couple weeks ago. Let's look at that. Let's open it up. Oh, and I pulled the vine off the spindle palm. It was time. It needed to go. Lots of other things are flowering with honeybees around. Look how pretty that hydrangea is. Not the one we just cut up, but oh, stunning. Yeah, and I think I will actually switch cameras because look, isn't that a great picture? Look at how nice this is. Now, I'm gonna finish the vlog with this one. I don't normally vlog with this camera one because it's kind of heavy and it mostly it's just expensive. I don't want to be walking around with it and risk breaking it. I prefer this on a tripod at all times. Should I put the low light lens on? Nah, I don't think so. I'll just do things underneath the light out there. This lens, it's a Canon lens. So, which is awesome, but I have a Sony camera. There's an adapter on here that lets you attach a Sigma lens to a Sony camera. Usually you'd use like a Sony, a Zeiss lens. This lets you use those nice lenses. Canon has some amazing lenses, but you can't use autofocus in video mode with the adapter. There's an annoying clicking sound. Look at this amazing picture. I'm switching over, so I'm gonna cut back over into this camera. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe take the lens cap off. That's better. There we go. Okay. Let me go ahead and get this fountain so you guys can see that. Okay. There we go. I can turn this fan off. <laughs> yeah, that's so much better. How is that reflection when this is backlit? Where's my shadow coming from? There's no lighting box. Whatever. Here's the fountain. <laughs> my voice cracking and everything. It's the Ashland fountain from Michaels. It's just... A little fountain. It's a decent size, has lights in it, which I just realized means I'm probably gonna need two extension cords. Hmm. I just wanted to be sure to like actually show it on the box before just pulling this thing out so that there's that like expectations versus reality thing. Cause you know, they don't have these running on the display. They're just kind of sitting up on a shelf. So I don't, who knows what it's actually gonna look like. I guess I might actually want to see what's going on here. So you can be like, ooh, fountain unboxing. No, no one cares. Instructions, I'm sure those aren't important. We've got, I bet this is the electrical stuff in here more than likely, and the fountain. That's cute. I do like the kind of faux finish and everything with the rocks. Gives it sort of a natural appearance. I mean, who cares? Who cares? This needs to be running and lit up, right? That's all that matters. Oh, this is interesting. There's only one item in here, or it's kind of a two for one sort of thing. So this has like a little adapter piece that's wired into the pump, and I assume that this is what's going to make that light run. So I'm only gonna need one cord, which is nice, but how am I gonna turn the light off during the day without turning the fountain off? Huh? That's, that, what, that's gonna be a problem. Big ol' hole in here, reach in and Get this out, we screw that onto there, and that's fantastic. Who doesn't love having electrical components sitting in a well of water? I just never trust those things when it just, it doesn't seem safe, right? I'm gonna leave it sitting out. Heck, I bet the directions even say I'm not supposed to have it like that. Here is the pump, it's adjustable, has a plus and a minus on it. And make sure to turn it up to the plus, want that running on full blast, and then just gonna put this on here. This very simple setup, the hose is flexible. I like that. All right. Okay, I'm just gonna fill it up and plug it in. Let's see, oh, great picture. There we go, kind of. Oh, that's pretty, I like that. Yeah, that's pretty cute. Adorable, actually. That's so serene and calm. I love this. Now, <laughs> one thing I will say, at the store, at Michael's, it was saying that this was $29.99, that was the clearance price, and it said the regular prices on these things were, uh, I don't remember, I want to say it was like $99.99 to $129.99? Nope, not $129.99, not $99.99. This thing's little. Okay, this table that it's sitting on is a little $4.99 table I got on clearance at my local grocery store, and it's 12 by 12. So that's the measurement of the top of that table. So this thing's maybe, I, don't, I guess I can look, but it's not very tall. I don't know, I was just looking at the box, I don't see any dimensions. Like I said, it's little. It's cute, I'll give it that. $29.99, <laughs> I just say that really weird? 
twin nine 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 nine. I don't. My tongue just kind of kept doing things. Thirty bucks, sure, great price. I'm totally fine with it. I really like it. Would never spend more than that on this. Absolutely not. Although it does say outdoors on it, doesn't it? I mean, it says garden on the box, so that kind of implies that it should be okay to keep this outside, wouldn't you think? Yes, probably. I do really like the warmth of the light and the reflection and everything. That's so calming. And I, of course, immediately just want to put some type of media in the top and have some like creeping Jenny growing over the whole thing. I'm not going to do that though. This thing's resin. I'm not going to have this outside all year. I have a feeling this would just crack in the winter time. I mean, even if let to dry out, which I would have to do. It would freeze solid and totally break if I didn't do that. But like even just leaving the fountain outside dry on its own, I feel like it would probably still crack and break. However, this is small enough that I could put this in the house. I'd want to put somewhere where the cat can't get to it because Pumpkin's afraid of fountains. The, my younger cat, she'll stay away from it, but the other cat may not. And I don't know if the pump, I'm going through the directions here in the manual, I'm not seeing anything about it being like oil-free gaskets and that everything about it's safe. So I wouldn't want the cats drinking out of it. Just to be safe, kind of a warrior when it comes to my animals. I tend to overthink things and whatnot. Wow. Oh, this is so pretty. I mean, I'm not thrilled with having lost or like the majority of the vlog files being corrupted on the other camera. But this is so soothing, I'm almost glad it happened because this is, I'm just feeling very calm and tranquil right now, looking more so looking at it on the viewfinder than in real life. In real life, it's still really cool, but the viewfinder, like, really seeing the reflection of those lights, which I would. Did you hear that? What's happening? Why can't I talk? Which I try? Which I would probably see more of the reflection in person if the lights and everything weren't on outside. But I kind of want them on so that you, you know, you guys need to see what's going on. Look at the, look at the pretty fountain. Such a pretty fountain. I uh, would love to set this up someplace with some like ferns and mosses and whatnot around it. That was actually my original thinking with this. Sorry, my phone keeps going off. Someone's, I got a bugaboo. They won't leave me alone. As I was saying, my original intent with the fountain was that I had mentioned when I did my, like my therapy garden, my meditation garden area, that vlog, I don't know, several weeks ago, that I had always wanted to incorporate a fountain over there. And I was like, you know what? This might be perfect. It's little and it's not going to take up a ton of space, but It'll still be kind of tranquil and have some reflection at nighttime. And I can't put it over there yet because just like everything else out here, everything's broken. The electrical over there is broken. I'm blaming the squirrels. I don't know. Need to get some new wires run. Maybe the pipes got broken. I don't know. It's been broken for like two years. I'm going to get an electrician out here to get that worked on at some point. So until then, this looks nice right here. Or I might maybe put it inside like in my bathroom. That could be nice. Surprise. Very zen. Or I even had a thought, I don't know if I can talk about this right now. Well, it's my channel, I can do whatever the heck I want to, it's my decision. I have a planter I did over here, this video isn't out yet, so that's why I wasn't sure if I should really talk about it, but I just won't show the whole thing. You'll see part of it in the Fern Friday video, or you will have seen it if you watched that video, the video prior to this one. And I had talked about doing up this particular planter here, it's a square, like, faux wood planter. It's really pretty. I can't show the whole thing, so let's just go back over here and look at the nice view of the fountain. But to put a little fountain in the middle of the planter, with some, maybe some stromanthes or something like that around it, that would look so pretty. Wouldn't that just look nice? It would be tranquil. My stromanthes are sitting over here next to some little mangaves I need to do something with over there. There's the stromanthes right there the trio star isn't she pretty but i could totally set this in the middle of a pot i probably want to put some gravel down on the bottom of the pot just to be safe help prevent like too much contact between the fountain and the soil i mean it's resin so it shouldn't matter but it's also i have a feeling probably pretty cheap so who knows how resistant it's going to be to rotting over time and whatnot but that would just oh. <laughs> Oh, okay, I just had a mosquito fly almost right into my ear. I managed to get it before it got in there, but this is just, I can't, I can't function like this. That's why I have the fan out here. This fan makes such a big difference because mosquitoes suck at flying, so it just kind of blows them away. 
and I don't get eaten alive when I'm sitting by the fan. This has been the worst year ever for mosquitoes. And it's just because you know, the Midwest, it's been very wet here. Lots of rain, which has been nice in some respects, bad in other respects, you know, crops and things like that, I don't think are doing super well in certain areas from all the flooding. By super well, I mean, I think they've been destroyed. But I've had my irrigation system out here turned off for like two and a half weeks and haven't had to water, which has been pretty nice. I've had to hand water here and there with certain things, but I haven't been using water to water the plants. And that's not something I think I've ever been able to do before, at least not for this long. I've had to shut off for a few days, but never for this long. And yes, I have bug spray. I just don't like using it. I even I have some all natural bug spray that it doesn't work at all. It's like lemongrass and peppermint oil and a whole bunch of stuff in it. It does, it, it's terrible. It doesn't work. But it does make my skin smell nice and makes it extra soft because of the oils, which is great. But I don't like using the regular bug sprays if I'm just sitting outside my backyard because I don't, with the DEET and everything, even the ones that are DEET free, I just don't want the chemicals on my um, carpets, on my couches, on my bed. So if I ever do put on bug spray, I have to like make sure I like scrub extra hard in the shower. I always take a shower before I go to sleep. It's just a habit. I have to, I can't go to bed without taking a shower. And, um, but otherwise, I just it's my cat. Like I said before the fountain, I'm overprotective of my cats and I just don't want her to come in contact with anything like that, so. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sorry it's a shorter vlog. New camera's in the mail. <laughs> How many times have I said that now? Probably a lot. Like I said, I just can't vlog with this big one. It makes me too nervous. I don't like walking around with it. And the, they're like gimbals that you can put it into to carry it around with, but they're extremely expensive. I'd rather just buy a separate vlog camera and then preserve the life of, this is what I call my stationary cam, my main cam. This is the A cam because it has an amazing picture. Isn't that nice? It's very nice. Half the time I vlog, I use my phone anyways. I'm not gonna go walking around stores and stuff like that with an actual camera. Phones have really good quality on them. If anybody's out there is like, I wanna start a YouTube channel and need a camera, use your phone. Most phones have great cameras on them. Okay, at this point, I'm just rambling and I'm sorry. Here, let's go on a walk. Let's see what, how things are looking out here tonight. Pretty, oh, you can't see that. That's the other thing. I filmed a lot of videos this week and uh, you can't, you just can't see what's in them because they're not going to come out yet. They will not have been out yet. That's what I meant to say. There was a monster spider in here. He had a web going from this rail over to here. Is he out tonight? I don't see him, which is fine by me. Okay, that was a fun walk. I need to sit back down. There's a lot of mosquitoes over there. At least over here where I sit, the mosquitoes aren't as bad. I would still like to do a nighttime garden tour. I need to do the September garden tour, actually. I had to get some new lights and everything. The, like, three of them shorted out from all the flooding and everything, so I need to get those set up, but I can't do that tonight. It's too dark. I don't want to work with electrical things. At least where those lights go, it's too dark, and I don't want to work with the electrical things. Look at how shiny and reflective the crotons are. I think crotons are so beautiful at nighttime. I'm always talking about how white plants and just like white variegated plants stand out great at nighttime. When I potted up this Alpinia Zaremba back here, the variegated one, the variegated shell ginger, I talked about how I wanted it back here past the light because it would reflect and stand out at nighttime, which it does. But with the crotons, they do that even more. Also, the wind blew this pot around and I can see its tag. Oh, that's gonna bug me. Yeah, with the crotons, they do the same thing. Like, no matter what color the leaf is, highly reflective. Partially because they're shiny, which who doesn't love shiny, right? But the variegation, so nice. And a wonderful backdrop to this beautiful fountain. I was just talking about how I had filmed a lot of videos this week. That's because I have family coming in town next week, which means I also may not have a vlog next weekend. I don't know. I'm sorry if I don't. You know, when family's around, it's important to spend as much time with them as possible. And the vlogging sometimes a little bit awkward around other people. So I don't know. We'll see. Chances are there'll be something because I'm going to want to play with the new camera. It just also may not be a long one, but for different reasons. <laughs> Where is this one? Not long because, you know, life happened, which is okay. Like I said, I'm fine with it. I mean, it's no big deal. Nothing I haven't seen before, really. I, there was a uh, philodendron at one of the nurseries I was at that was absolutely stunning. But it was just um, uh, one of the, what's it, with the moonlight moon glows, you know, one of those guys. So it wasn't like a super rare one. It was just really vibrant more way more vibrant than mine i think that's like the only thing that's gone that well, i was like man i wish they could have seen that and then other things i had to re-explain but hey it's okay worked out well because this is calming 
at least for me. Probably maybe just kind of weird and awkward for you on the other side watching this, but for me, I'm feeling very zen and relaxed right now, which is a rare feeling these days, and I'll take it. I hope everybody else kind of has those moments too. It's important. You know, it's been kind of an intense few weeks in the media and everything, and now this Hurricane Dorian situation, it's just, things are kind of sad. On that note, um, if anybody has any charities or GoFundMe things you want me to link in the description of this video, I will do that. Um, just let me know. I'd be happy to do so. Anything I can do to help support people in need, I'm down, I'm in. There are going to be a lot of people who need help, and I think it's really important to do whatever is possible. I mean, even if it's just, you know, copying and pasting a link into the description of a video, I will do that. Let me know. I'd be happy to. I mean, if there's enough of a response, there might even just be a whole separate video on something like that. But I hope everybody's doing well. Pardon the noise, airplane. Why did you choose to focus back there all of a sudden? Look at this beauty right in front of your lens self. What's happening? There we go. Come on now. Having a great day, great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. If you haven't already and you'd like to, give the video a thumbs up. It makes a big difference for the videos and for the channel and I appreciate it, so thank you. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. I'll upload multiple times a week. That way you'll know new videos come out. There's a hint of laughter in my voice because I'm like, am I really asking for likes on this video? But maybe it will have come out just wonderfully. Like I said though, I'm like, I'm into this. I'm cool with this. I might. There might be a video coming out in a few days that's just this with music behind it. And maybe I'll like do this every now and then just to say hi. When I take this inside or place it in the garden, I'll be sure to post an update of that probably on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. The rest of my social media is linked down below in the description of the video. I do have trouble keeping up with the DMs though, but guys, I'm trying. I'm trying my best. I'm sorry if it takes a while to get back to you. Or if I don't, it's just probably because I didn't see it. So I'm sorry if that happens. Doesn't happen very often though. I don't think it... At least I don't think it does. Okay, but as always, and of course, the most important thing, keep on growing. Bye-bye.